a concrete wall so massive that its shadow covers entire villages. Behind it, billions of liters of water, waiting, restrained. But this is not just a wall. This is a sleeping giant, hiding tunnels, turbines, and technology so powerful it can light up entire cities in a single second. Today, we'll discover how water transforms into electricity, how engineers learn to control rivers, and how one mistake can bring catastrophic destruction. This is not just a story about engineering. This is a story about civilization survival. Welcome to the hidden engineering of hydroelectric dams. First question, where do you build a dam? Engineers don't randomly choose any river. They need a narrow valley, steep mountains, and massive water flow. Because the higher the water falls, the more energy it generates. This is called potential energy, gravity's gift to humanity. But selecting a location is only the first step. The real challenge begins with understanding the geography. Geologists first scan rock layers, because if the foundation is weak, the dam can collapse in seconds. In China, in 1975, the Bankiao Dam disaster occurred when the entire dam failed in one night, and 26,000 people died directly. This happened because the foundation study wasn't conducted properly. Seismic teams predict earthquakes because dams in earthquake zones face extreme risks. Engineers in Japan discovered that large dams can actually trigger earthquakes themselves because billions of tons of water apply pressure on underground rock layers. This is called reservoir-induced seismicity. Hydrologists study decades of rainfall data to determine how much water needs to be controlled. In India, monsoons are unpredictable. During the 2018 Kerala floods, 35 dams had to release water simultaneously because rainfall predictions were incorrect. It's not just data, satellite images, 3D terrain maps, computer simulations, everything is used. NASA satellites now monitor river flow patterns from space. And when everything aligns, the decision is finally made. Yes, a dam will be built here, but construction hasn't even started yet, and engineers are already planning thousands of details. Concrete temperature, water pressure, even insects that could create problems at the construction site. Now begins the most intense phase, the construction of the dam wall. First, the river must be stopped. Engineers build temporary channels, coffer dams that divert water away from the construction site. Then for the foundation, engineers blast into mountains to reach solid rock, because if the base is weak, such a heavy structure will never stand. Look at America's famous Hoover Dam. It used 3.25 million cubic meters of concrete. That's enough concrete to build the Great Pyramid of Giza twice over. Concrete pouring begins layer by layer, block by block. But here's the twist. You can't just pour concrete randomly. When so much concrete sets together, it releases immense heat. The concrete curing process involves a chemical reaction called hydration. In this reaction, temperature can reach 70 degrees Celsius. If this heat isn't distributed equally, the concrete will crack like glass. That's why engineers embed cooling pipes inside each block. Chilled water flows continuously through these pipes, maintaining perfect temperature. At Hoover Dam, this cooling process lasted five years. Scientists calculated that without cooling pipes, that concrete would take 125 years to cool naturally. Some dams are so large that their concrete curing process lasts for years. Sensors are placed on every layer, temperature, pressure, stress, everything is monitored in real time. Special chemicals are mixed into the concrete to make it water resistant and earthquake proof. Modern concrete includes fly ash, silica fume, and special polymers. China's Three Gorges Dam, the world's largest hydroelectric dam, used specially developed low heat concrete that cures slowly and generates less heat. And when the wall is finally complete, it's not just a structure. It's a fortress designed to last for centuries. But construction doesn't end here because now the river must return and be controlled. Imagine billions of tons of water in front of you, restrained. Pressure so intense that concrete walls vibrate. Behind the Three Gorges Dam, 
39.3 billion cubic meters of water is stored. That's so much water that scientists measured that the weight of this water slightly slowed Earth's rotation speed by just 0.06 microseconds. But engineers didn't fight nature. They guided it. Inside the dam are multiple systems that control water flow. The first system is spillways. These are giant tunnels that safely release excess water. If there were no spillways and too much water came during monsoons, the dam would overflow and cause flooding. In 1889, the Johnstown flood occurred in America when the South Fork Dam failed because it didn't have a proper spillway. In a single day, 2,209 people died. Some dams have morning glory spillways. These are circular holes that literally swallow water like a whirlpool. Look at California's Monticello Dam. Its spillway diameter is 22 meters, and it can handle 1,370 cubic meters of water per second. Water enters from the top and exits safely into the river through underground tunnels. This design is so effective that water releases without any erosion. The second system is sluice gates. These are heavy steel gates that precisely control water pressure. Each gate weighs more than 100 tons. Automated sensors continuously monitor if pressure increases too much. Gates automatically open. Modern dams use hydraulic systems that can operate gates in milliseconds. The third system is penstocks. These are massive pipes that carry water to the powerhouse. The diameter is so large that a truck could easily enter. Grand Coulee Dam has 12 penstocks, each 4 meters in diameter. These pipes are made from special steel that can handle extreme pressure. Water travels through these pipes at speeds exceeding 100 kilometers per hour. But most important is pressure management. Sensors inside the dam continuously measure water level, how much pressure is building, how fast turbines are spinning. The Vajant Dam disaster occurred in Italy in 1963 when engineers ignored mountain instability. A massive landslide fell into the reservoir and 50 million cubic meters of water became a giant wave that surged over the dam. The dam remained intact, but the wave completely destroyed the village below. 1,900 people died. If anything abnormal occurs, alarms activate and engineers immediately take action because one wrong calculation and the dam can fail. The most invisible engineering happens inside the powerhouse. This is an underground hall so large that aircraft could be parked inside. Itaipu Dam's powerhouse is 968 meters long. Inside, giant turbines are installed. Each turbine weighs hundreds of tons. Each of Itaipu's turbines weighs 2,700 tons. When sluice gates open, water rushes through penstocks at high speed. And when this water strikes the turbine blades, it spins them at nearly 150 rotations per second. This speed is so high that if you look closely, the blades appear blurred. But electricity doesn't come from water. Electricity comes from magnetism. Attached to the turbine is a generator. Inside the generator are massive copper coils, and powerful magnets rotate around these coils. When magnets rotate, the magnetic field changes. And when the magnetic field changes, electrons move. And when electrons move, electricity is generated. This process is called electromagnetic induction, discovered by Michael Faraday in 1831. Three Gorges Dam has 32 turbines, each generating 700 megawatts. One turbine generates enough electricity to power 750,000 homes. But here's the problem. The electricity turbines generate is low voltage around 20,000 volts, and low voltage cannot be transmitted over long distances. That's why giant transformers are located outside the powerhouse. These transformers step up voltage, sometimes to 500,000 volts. High voltage means less energy loss during transmission. In physics, there's a rule. Power equals voltage times current. If you increase voltage, you need less current to transmit the same power and less current means less resistance loss. That's why voltage is kept extremely high for long distance transmission. And then this electricity travels thousands of kilometers to the national grid. India's longest transmission line is 1,728 kilometers long, running from Shampa to Kurukshetra. But all this happens seamlessly 
You simply flip a switch and the light turns on. But behind the scenes, this entire system is working silently, perfectly. But with every engineering marvel comes risk. The first danger is sedimentation. When a river is dammed, sand and silt slowly deposit behind it. Years later, these sediments accumulate so much that water storage capacity decreases. Pakistan's Tarbala Dam had a capacity of 11.6 billion cubic meters when it was built in 1974. By 2024, it has reduced to 9.7 billion cubic meters, solely due to sedimentation. Some dams use special dredging systems that periodically remove sediments. But this process is expensive and not always effective. The second danger is seepage. Water is very powerful. It can slowly penetrate even concrete. If cracks form, water starts entering. That's why engineers build drainage galleries. These are internal tunnels that safely divert seepage water. These galleries are so important that engineers regularly go inside them for inspections. Sometimes these tunnels extend up to two kilometers inside the dam. Sensors continuously monitor humidity and water flow. The third danger is earthquakes. When such heavy water is stored in one place, it applies immense pressure on underground rock layers. Sometimes this pressure can trigger earthquakes, called reservoir-induced seismicity. A famous example is China's Zipingpu Dam. This dam was fully filled in May 2008, and just 19 days later, a 7.9 magnitude Sichuan earthquake occurred, killing 87,000 people. Scientists still debate whether the dam triggered the earthquake or if it was coincidence. In India, a 6.5 magnitude earthquake occurred near Koina Dam in 1967, four years after the dam was filled. The fourth danger is dam failure. If a dam fails, what happens is unstoppable. Billions of liters of water at once, sweeping away downstream villages and cities. The largest dam disaster in history occurred in China in 1975. Typhoon Nina brought record-breaking rainfall, 1,060 millimeters in just 24 hours. Both Bankiao Dam and Shimantan Dam failed. The result was devastating. 62 dams failed in total in a domino effect. The official death toll is 26,000. But unofficial estimates say 240,000 people died. 11 million people became homeless. That's why modern dams have multiple layers of safety systems. Real-time monitoring sensors collect data every second. Automated alarm systems that activate instantly if anything abnormal is detected. Emergency spillways that can handle unexpected floods. Satellite surveillance that monitors the dam's structural health from space. Regular structural inspections where engineers physically check every section of the dam. Engineers never take risks because in dam engineering, failure is not an option. Today, hydroelectric engineering is evolving. Previously, dams only generated electricity, but now they're becoming energy storage systems. Example, pumped storage hydropower. When electricity demand on the grid is low, like at night, Excess electricity is used to pump water from a lower reservoir to an upper reservoir. And when demand is high, like during the day, that water flows back down and generates electricity. It's literally a giant battery that stores energy. Bath County Pumped Storage Station in Virginia is the world's largest pumped storage facility. It can generate 3,003 megawatts and store 24,000 megawatt hours of energy. That's enough energy to supply peak demand for the entire state of Virginia for eight hours. Round trip efficiency is 75 to 80 percent, meaning if you use 100 units of electricity to pump water, you get back 75 to 80 units when generating. The second innovation is run of river dams. These are small dams that don't completely block the river. They only use natural flow to run turbines. Ecological impact is less and construction is faster. Bhutan has the most run of river projects. Bhutan generates 99.9% of its total electricity from hydropower and earns 30% of its GDP by exporting electricity. The third innovation is AI and automation. Now AI systems can predict rainfall weeks in advance. Machine learning algorithms analyze historical data and predict future water flow. 
turbines automatically adjust. Water release is optimized. Everything is becoming smart. In Norway, AI-powered dams are already operational, operating completely autonomously with minimal human intervention. In the future, dams won't just be bigger, they'll be intelligent. Hydroelectric power is renewable, clean, and reliable, but it also has environmental and social costs. When a dam is built, an artificial lake forms behind it, called a reservoir. This reservoir sometimes submerges entire villages and forests. During Three Gorges Dam construction, 1.3 million people were forcefully relocated. 13 cities, 140 towns, and 1,350 villages were completely submerged. Cultural heritage sites and ancient temples went underwater. The ecological impact is also major. Fish migration routes get blocked. Sediments don't reach downstream areas that are essential for river deltas. Water temperature changes, affecting aquatic life. All the dams on the Mekong River have reduced fish populations by 80%, threatening food security for 60 million people. Climate change is also affecting hydroelectric dams. Glaciers are melting, so initially water flow is increasing. But long term, when glaciers disappear, there will be permanent water shortages. Droughts are becoming more frequent. During California's 2021 drought, Oroville Dam's electricity generation decreased by 50% because water levels were very low. Rainfall patterns are becoming unpredictable, complicating dam operations. But solutions are also emerging. Fish ladders and fish elevators are being built that allow fish to migrate upstream. Sediment flushing techniques are being developed. Environmental flow requirements are being set that protect downstream ecosystems. Dam decommissioning is also becoming an option where old, inefficient dams are removed and rivers are restored. In America, 1,797 dams have been removed in the last 30 years. So this was the story, the hidden engineering of hydroelectric dams. Behind a concrete wall are hidden tunnels, turbines, sensors, and systems that control rivers, that convert gravity into electricity, that power millions of lives. Next time you stand near a dam and hear the roar of water, remember this is not just water. This is proof of human imagination. Because engineering is not about defeating nature. Engineering is about understanding nature and guiding it. And these dams are doing exactly that. Silently, perfectly, endlessly.